Okay, welcome to the next tutorial in our series on Photoshop editing. This time around, we're going to focus on some little bit more advanced techniques. We're going to focus on uh, spot removal, noise reduction, uh, color filters, and uh, a more advanced level of masking, things that will be useful in pretty much all your underwater pictures. I have not shown you the step I did in Camera Raw. Um, I cropped this image down a little bit and reduced the shadows, dropped the highlights. I didn't do any color correction at all though, just the basics. So what I want to do now is let's walk through the process of doing spot removal. We already have our layer here, the background layer locked. We have it just in case. Now what I want to do is I want to come down here, click the little plus. Now I have a new layer. Come over here, Select the spot healing brush. Looks like a little Band-Aid, okay? Up here, make sure it has sample all layers selected. That means it will sample everything underneath the layer. If you take this off, it will only do this layer. And since this is an empty layer, it won't do anything. Leave content aware selected. You can play with these, but just leave this. And you want to make sure that your brush has a 0% hardness on it. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit and I'll show you how powerful this thing is. Okay, now what I need to do first, I need to duplicate this layer. Sorry. Okay, now we have a layer to work on. This was locked, so it wouldn't do anything. Now it can sample this layer. This one may as well not be there. Now with the Band-Aid selected, click that. Oops, go on this layer, sorry. There. Go on. Zoom in so you can see here. Okay, see this? As I go, I'm just clicking and it makes these backscatters disappear. You can see sometimes I go over it twice, like I'll click here. And if it doesn't quite look right, I'll make it a little bit bigger and a bigger shape and do that just to get a, a cleaner image. You get some noise in there. It's gotten better now this tool in Photoshop where it will connect lines. So going in and working on an area like this black coral, becomes really pretty simple. Let's just zero in on the real egregious backscatters here. That one, like this big blob there, we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that there, get rid of that there. All right. Get rid of these big ones. I mean, you can spend as much or as little time doing this as you want. Um, you're really better off to just, when you're taking the picture in camera, um, set your strobes correctly so you don't have this problem. You're still gonna have some backscatter. This is a very, very poor visibility dive. It was quite mucky in Chrome that day. And this was also the very, very, very first picture I shot on this trip. Control Z that, didn't work out well. And was just experimenting. But it makes a good example here. All right, I mean, we can do this and beat this to death, but let's just, let's just call that a day. So anyway, we come, we zoom out. Here is the original. You can see some of the big backscatters in here, and here's the changes. And if you want to spend a really long time, you can go ahead and really clean that out, but we're not going to do that. The next thing we're going to do is noise reduction. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. If you hit Control, Shift, Alt, and E, it creates a new layer based on all the layers underneath it. So this is, I use that to create a new base to work from. And then you go Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise. Oops. And you just tell that, it gives you all kinds of information to say OK. But this has gotten so good where it says Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise, you can see here to here, here, to here. Now, if you come in real close though, and we'll zoom in on this lionfish's face, you can see we lose some of the detail. And how we can fix that is, you click on this little circle in the, square, in the rectangle here. This is Add Layer Mask, okay? We're gonna add that. I want the white here, it means everything I did is showing through, okay? but I want to hide 
fish. So I click, kind of ironic, it has a line fish on it. Click the brush, make sure it's black. This is actually said extremely big. I'm using left bracket to make it smaller. And I'm just painting this black to keep the detail in here. So we didn't lose the fish. I'm gonna do the same thing down here in the black coral, which is ironically orange, but hey, I didn't name it. So we're just gonna, it's very subtle, but we're gonna do that just to preserve detail where there was detail. So now we have, it's very hard to see, zoomed out, but if you come in, you can see all this noise in here is now gone, or much reduced. There are even more powerful noise reduction methods. We'll go through that in one of the next pictures, but we'll skip that for this one here. All right, so the next thing we wanna go into is what I call more advanced masking techniques. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to the adjustment layers. I'm gonna click, I'm adding a brightness and contrast, and I'm gonna bring the brightness down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna only work in this area over here. I want it to be really dark, and I'm gonna bump the contrast on it. Okay, now that just ruined the picture. Now, if I do a control, I have the mask selected here. If I do a control I, okay, now it's all black, it's completely masked out, I can't see anything. Come over here to my brush, change this so I'm using white, and make it big. I'm just gonna paint in where I want it to be dark, okay? Now, I would also like it to be dark in here and in here, and I'd like to make this a little bit less dark, okay? Now, you can add a million different layers, but something else you can do that a lot of even advanced Photoshop users don't realize this, you can come over here. A mask does not have to be black and white. It can be any shade of gray. White is completely transparent. Black is completely opaque. I wanna go somewhere in between. So I'm gonna click and select, you can see now it's this gray color for right in here. Now you can see that effect was much more subtle than what I was using before. It is about half the power here. See, here, and I'm using this as kind of a blending technique. All right. And then I want to do one that's even more, that's about 80% blocked out. And I'm gonna do it down here. I'm just gonna take the edge off of this. Okay, so now with that, you can see on this mask, it has black, it has white, and it has shades of gray. The shades of gray meaning something between zero and 100% opacity. If we click the eye, boom, made all that crap in there disappear. All right, so coming along pretty well. Now let's go back to adjustment and I want to show you about photo filters. Everyone knows that you can put red filters on cameras and that balances the photo underwater. In our intro tutorials, I talked about this where you're, in my opinion, oftentimes better off just shooting the picture in auto white balance, capturing the natural color that's there, and then here in post fixing it. So if we click this, and add a filter. I'll take height for a second. You can see the water here is generally a little greenish, a little sand. So we're going to come in here and we can add. I'm going to try to correct the greenish. The opposite of green is magenta. Okay. So I'm going to make the water blue. You can see here now it's a magenta filter. It's 25% dense. I want to make it wet. I mean, you can see if you go all the way, it really destroys it. But I want to make it less, and what I'm looking at is I'm going to control plus zoom in, hold the space bar and move it. I want the wine fish to look correct. Okay, you can see here the wine fish looks pink. You see here it has a CN touch to it. So I'm going to push, 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 and just stop it right about there. Okay. Now the wine fish looks all right. The water looks better, but let's take this to an extreme. Let's, using the photo filters, we can also use that as a hue saturation. But let's use another filter. 
I've also found that violet works very well in that color water. Through a lot of trial and error, I figured that out. Um, I want to make the water blue, okay? But now I've really messed up all this color in here. So again, we're going to mask. So here we have white, meaning everything is shown through. You come over here, you, you can see the remnants of my last mask. If you press D on your keyboard, oops, I'll just do it by hand. I guess I changed that key shortcut. So if we go back to white. I'm now using white. I'm going to change it over to black. And I want to hide the fish. And I want to hide the soft coral in here. Okay. And up in here. Control Z, and I'll do that one. Okay, so now we can. Now we're only playing with. You can see where the mask is. Okay, Let's come in here and tweak that. I'm going to go full black here. I don't want it to show through at all. And. Do a little smaller around the fish. Um, change the brush size down smaller. All right, now let's bring this down and we'll stop somewhere where it looks natural. All right, somewhere right in there. Okay, there we go. So that's using the advanced masking and the filters. And now I still think this is too bright. So why don't we come in here, add an adjustment layer. Drop the brightness, you can see that came down. I'm going to do a control I, which is fill this as black, it means invert. Now this is all black, I want to paint white in, right? And this area right in there, right on the edge, is a little too bright. And I want to do a less of an effect in there, in there. In there. All right, so overall, there we go. We have a definitely a better looking image. You can compare it here with the previous image in the article, or if I create a group and hide those, we started with that and ended with that. And if you look at the true starting picture, you can see we came from a badly underexposed picture to something that is actually pretty good. So hopefully you learned something in this one and let's go on to the next one.